All right, today I'm going to be demonstrating tying the uh, Light K Hill Dry Fly. It's a uh, cat skill style dry uh, originated by Dan K Hill about a hundred years ago back east. Um, that doesn't stop it from catching fish on uh, our uh, west side Oregon rivers though. Uh, it's a pretty good fly during the summer for our hatches of uh, PMDs and uh, pale evening duns as well. Uh, it's pretty versatile really. Um, like I said, I fish it all summer long. Carry it in sizes from 12 to 18, but typically the most important ones are going to be your uh, 14s and your 16s here. And uh, really most important is probably your 16s, what I fish more than anything else. Um, I'm using a ADOT Unithread here on a 14 uh, TMC 101, just a standard uh, straight dry fly hook. Um, the color of this thread is a, uh, actually called Light Cahill, but you could use any cream colored thread or a pale yellow. I'm going to go ahead and put the tail on now. Um, this is actually using a cream colored dry fly hackle. I'm trying to find some that doesn't have too much webbing there. Um, a little pinch of that. And this you want to make just about the length of the uh, hook shank. Get that tied on there nicely. Clipped. I'm just going to wind forward, get that tied in there. Now, the wing of this fly is made from uh, wood duck flank, and there's nothing really particularly difficult about tying this fly. Uh, really, probably the most difficult thing is finding some wood duck. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have friend of a friend that hunts and that's where I got this so if you are able to get it you really want to kind of use it sparingly and um, make as much use of the feather as you can uh, if you can't get real wood duck uh, Metz makes a, a dyed mallard flank I think that probably has the best color I'm going to do this wing I'm going to put the concave side up tie in on the um, tie it in tighten it and then I'm just going to slide it back down to a, so that I just have the feather just slightly probably taller than the gape of the hook or about that much left. So I'm going to tighten that, take another wrap, clip this off here And then I want to straighten this up with a couple of nice wraps in front of it. So there I got it standing up pretty straight, which is what you're going to want. And what I want to do is I'm going to want to divide it equal, about as equally as I can and put a couple of figure eight turns in near the base. I want to try to get that really on the shank of the hook so that it doesn't pull the wing forward. I do the ones away from me first and then come back towards me a couple figure eight wraps and then go back this direction again. Trying to get that on the shank. That is. So now we've got our divided wings. Carl, can I see how it looks that on? You pointed at me. And those are a little uneven those wings, the amount of fibers, but we'll have to live with that. So you got a good look there. And for dubbing, I'm using a, uh, a hairline dubbing blend that's actually called Light Cahill, so it's not real hard to pick out your color. Um, but you could use any kind of cream, light color dubbing. Um, try to tease this out a little bit, kind of making a triangle shape for a tapered body. And I'm just going to pour my dubbing rope there. It's not too thick. If it is a little bit thick, it'll still fish. Slide 
line that up. Just go ahead and line that forward, get a nice taper on the body. It's looking pretty good. What I want to do is I just want to leave a little bit of a gap there uh, behind the body that will give me space to tie in my uh, hackle. And so there will be a little bit of a hackle behind and in front of the wing. This is a just a bronze grade um, whiting forms ginger hackle. Just going to go ahead and tie that in behind the wing. And get this clipped off. Now these feathers are, are so nice that you don't really have to use, especially when they're this length, a hackle plier. I mean, it's not like you're going to lose your grip on this thing. Tie it forward. Go ahead and wrap this a few turns behind the wing and a few turns in front of it and that will help keep the wings in position that you want nice and centered up there with a little bit of hackle both in front and behind it. Maybe one more turn there. I'm not sure why not. Cinch that up. Like I said, this is a real versatile pattern. I've caught a lot of big trout on, on this pattern. It's not the most precise imitation, but it's been catching fish now for about 100 years, and I don't see any reason that it stopped doing that. Put a nice and neat little head on here. Whip finish this. There you have it, a light Cahill maybe. Not the best one I ever tied, but it's going to have to do.